This is stainless steel, and it is about three millimeters thick, which is supposedly what the final Cybertruck is gonna be. And I have been very excited about my Cybertruck because, well, as you know, I'm Dirty Tesla. My Teslas are dirty. I drive in unfavorable environments. My paint gets all scratched up and dinged up. And so I've been excited that I will not have to have paint anymore. I thought, hey, Cybertruck, who cares? You can run into stuff, you can hit it with a hammer, and none of this is gonna matter until Elon Musk made an interesting comment on X, and it got me thinking. In response to James Duma, who said people that key a Cybertruck are gonna be destroying their keys, Elon Musk responded, we might be able to offer an optional tungsten carbide coating, which is basically scratch proof to everything below diamond hardness. Which made me think, why should I care? Why would anyone need their Cybertruck to be scratch proof? It's already stainless steel, there's no paint to scratch. But, you know, you probably know, stainless steel scratches. It scratches pretty easily, actually. Check out my kitchen sink. I'm sure if you have a stainless steel refrigerator and people have put magnets on it, even that can scratch the stainless steel and make it look not so favorable. But even with that in mind, I thought, who cares? It's stainless steel. It's a Cybertruck. It's already ugly. Let it get all scratched up. It'll look pretty cool. Even some people were saying they're excited for their patina on their Cybertruck, which is usually referring to staining on copper, but you can have a patina on your stainless steel of scratches that you build up over time. And as we get ready to talk about Cybertruck, huge shout out to Shang Lin, my newest full self-driving patron. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Use Shang Lin's referral code down below if you want to save $250 on your new Tesla. Welcome to the frunk. But as I was talking to the Solar Brewery on X, what do breweries use? Well, they have huge stainless steel vats that they uh, grow their yeast in and get everything prepared in. And they were talking about their stainless steel maintenance. And I wanted to bang my head against the wall because I thought, I'm done, I don't need maintenance. I don't need to wash it. I don't need to do anything. I can just drive into bushes and nothing will matter. Now, unfortunately at this point, I think I was wrong and Cybertruck is gonna take just a little bit of love and care, probably still easier than our paint covered cars that are such a nightmare. But there are things we're gonna have to do to protect our Cybertruck, even if it's less than the paint covered cars. So I did a bunch of reading and research on this. And as I said, I'm not a stainless steel expert. So let's kind of do this together. If uh, you catch me saying something that you're like, what? No, that's not true. Or you have some additional advice, please leave it down in the comments. Let's have a discussion about stainless steel, what you plan to do with your Cybertruck, and if any of these points that I'm kind of learning about bum you out. So Cybertruck is supposedly using an ultra hard 30X or 300X cold rolled stainless steel, which is part of the 300 series of stainless steels. There are different types. And this is what Cybertruck is gonna use. Now stainless steel is highly resistive to corrosion and rust, but it's not rust proof. For whatever reason in my head, I thought, oh, it can't rust, it's stainless steel, but it can rust. It's just not very likely. And especially if you take care of it, it's not gonna happen. And if it does start to happen, you actually can usually just kind of clean it off and everything's gonna be all better unless you let it get too far. And we're gonna go over a lot of that. So on the outside of stainless steel, you have a chromium oxide layer, which forms on the stainless steel surface when chromium reacts with oxygen in the air. And this process happens pretty much instantly. The formation speeds have been measured and they are down to the nanoseconds that it takes for this film to form. And the thickness, it's very extremely thin. It's just measured in microns. But that's all you need, this very thin layer of chromium oxide protects the stainless steel from rust and other things happening and so this is kind of the protection you have now when the layer is that thin it's very easy for you to scratch it but what's so cool about this what I just said is this reaction happens almost instantly so if you do get a scratch what happens the chromium in that stainless steel will just once again instantly react with oxygen form a new layer of protection for you, even if you have a little groove, a little scratch in there, and you're protected once again. So what's very cool, the corrosion resistance is brought about by an ability to form and even regenerate this chromium oxide layer in the presence of oxygen, which obviously is everywhere. And so you have a lot of protection against that corrosion, but not infinite. Now stainless steel does not natively have corrosion resistance below this oxide layer. And as a result, if corrosion does start, it can progress rapidly. So it's something that you need to address really quickly if you see it start to happen. So this leads me to my first potential negative. And some of this is I was reading online. Sorry, I can't find it again where it was. I was saving this stuff. I, I didn't uh, save it. Um, and part of it was just kind of thinking about this is all the wraps we've been seeing on the Cybertrucks and everybody's so excited to wrap their Cybertruck and it's gonna be super easy to wrap it because it's flat and angular and blah, blah, blah. Well, some discussion online and, and some places are saying, look, if you wrap it, now you are basically starving it of its source of oxygen. 
Now I wouldn't expect a wrap to be airtight, but you will have less oxygen access, especially say in the middle of the wrap, say you got a, a huge wrap on the door or something. There's not gonna be much or maybe even no oxygen getting to that point in the wrap. And so you could have damage there if water gets in or anything else, the stainless steel could start to rust and you may not even see it because you have this wrap over top. Now, of course, the wrap will guard and protect from scratches, but in an unlikely scenario where there is a scratch that happens and you cannot get oxygen access to that stainless steel, it's not gonna make its chromium oxide layer, and then you will not have protection there and rust and corrosion can begin. So this kind of takes us back to the tungsten carbide coating. When I posted this on X, some people were like, yeah, it's because Tesla owners just buy all the options and it's a way for Tesla to make more money, which I'm not gonna lie, that's like partially true, but this would protect against Scratching, if it's really that hard, you'd keep your chromium oxide layer intact. You'd thus protect your stainless steel from any corrosion. Now let's talk about the bed of the Cybertruck because some people like to line their beds and I think this information can apply there too. And speaking of the bed of the Cybertruck, I don't have a Cybertruck yet, but I do have a Model Y and we can use our Model Ys to sleep in the back like a bed if we want with the new AeroGoGo Shield automatic air mattress. This thing is awesome, check it out. Look how little that is. Here's the AeroGoGo mattress. Uh, this is the shield. It is in this and you can just bring this anywhere with you. You undo that and this is everything you need right in this small bag. We pull that out, the directions are built in so you'll never lose the directions, although after the first setup, you probably won't need the directions because it's super simple. We can just blam and blam, put our seats down here. Look at that, <laughs> we're good. And then everything that you need is built in. So this will inflate in two and a half minutes and this will deflate. And you can just set this all up. It comes with everything you need. I might need to go up there to spread that part out. Uh, but built in here, let me unscrew this and bring it a little closer. So right here is your air in, I unscrewed that. All you gotta do is keep this, take this little cap off and bam, there's a sweet fan in there. And once you click that button, that's it. Listen to that thing go. You are inflating. And if you do need to charge it, even though it's battery powered, they were kind enough to include everything you need right here. So if we take this out of the packaging, you have, thank God, USB-C. And in case you don't have one of these yourself, a 12 volt outlet. And of course, this is right in the back of the Model Y. So it doesn't even really need to be battery powered because you can plug in right here and charge it and power it. So let's run up here, spread all of this out. And the mattress has built in pillow. It's super firm so that it will be really comfortable and hold its shape. And like I said, if I need to charge it, I have this in the 12 volt right there and it's plugged in, that's it. And we can fill it just like that while it's plugged in. Let's see it go. So just like that, we should be full. So this is nice and firm. I'm just gonna take this, plug it, and we can, of course you don't need to have it plugged in, but I just had it plugged in like that. It is battery powered as I showed before. And sorry, this is kind of hard to do one handed while I'm filming, but there you go. You put that on and wow. So let's hop in here. Now, of course, normally you could control this from your phone, but I'm recording from my phone, so I can't do that right now. But we're out here in the wilderness camping, as you can see, we hop in. Oh, that is awesome. And again, I'd normally use my phone, but since I don't have it, let's close it up and I'll see you tomorrow after I get a good night's rest. Oh crap, the child locks are on. How do I get out? Here it is, you can see, looks great in here. It fits perfectly around all the curves in the car. That is awesome. And you still could access your storage down here if you need to, so that's good. Get your built-in pillows up there. And then when you're done, you simply take this off, the out. Again, I'm doing this one-handed. There we go. You can hear it coming out, but to accelerate that for you, there is another little built-in motor here. Of course, we're not plugged in right now, but that motor will help you deflate really quickly and then get moving on your way. So awesome, thank you so much to AeroGoGo for sponsoring. Great product, check it out at the link below. The bed, as we saw in the early prototypes, is gonna be all stainless steel and you're just chucking stuff in there, which is what I plan to do. Oh, I got a wheelbarrow, just chuck it in there. I have a bunch of gravel I need to move. I, I literally plan on filling my bed with gravel to bring to my house. I just put all the gravel, isn't that gonna scratch it up? Yeah, it might scratch it up, 
for the most part, hopefully your, your layers will reform and you'll be all set. But what about bed liners? A lot of people like putting a liner in their truck bed and this potentially brings us back to the same issue of oxygen not being able to access the stainless steel. I don't think I need to repeat myself. You can probably guess where I'm going with this. But if you have that bed liner, especially the spray on types, if they're really tight against there, if some type of damage occurs, to the stainless steel under there, oxygen can't easily access it. You could have corrosion start, get below the chromium oxide layer, and then again, you'll have problems there. Now, I guess I should point out that traditional paint cars rust all the time too. I guess it depends on where you are. In Michigan, our roads are really salty. And so if you get a bunch of salt up in your car, especially if your paint is worn away somewhere and you, your car is made of steel or at least parts of it, and if you're not washing your car, at least rinsing it off, maybe at the end of the winter season or a couple times during the winter season, that can really accelerate rust and unfortunately it's the same thing for stainless steel if you have some of these damages occurring somewhere near the bottom where you're kicking up rocks and stuff well guess what you're probably also going to be kicking up salt if you of course drive and live in an area where they put salt in the roads which i do and this can also further enhance corrosion so say you got a wrap on your car and then you kick up some rocks and sand and stuff and then it's interacting with that wrap in there there's just one little area where oxygen can't get in but you're getting all dinged up and then it can start to spread so i'm not trying to alarm anybody or anything it's just kind of thoughts i'm having about you know cybertruck is going to take a little bit of care which as we'll talk about soon luckily is going to be extremely easy now what about real world examples of this well i found two and one is pretty shocking but the first one is using vinyl coated stainless steel lifelines on boats so like if you're walking around a boat and they put these lines up so that you can kind of hold on or you don't fall off or whatever well you can get these stainless steel lines that are either coated in vinyl or uncoated and it seems like a lot of places actually have banned the coated lines because they are so prone to failure they are coated the stainless steel in there has no access to oxygen and so they can corrode and rust over time and on top of that you can't see that it's happening you have a line there you go and touch it and it just snaps because it's been corroding under there for a while nobody can see it first of all but but second of all, that corrosion has been sped up due to the lack of oxygen. Using uncoated wire is now also an offshore equipment requirement for boats in a race which is sanctioned by the ISAF. Some organizations are realizing these coated lines are not as safe and they're not as durable and they don't last as long, so they've been banned. The second example, in 1985, 12 people were killed in Uster, Switzerland when the concrete roof of a swimming pool collapsed only after 13 years of use. The roof was supported by stainless steel rods in tension, which failed due to stress corrosion cracking. There have been other incidents associated with the use of stainless steel in safety critical load-bearing applications in the environment created by modern indoor swimming pools and leisure centers. Chloride is a major factor in corrosion of reinforced concrete and the chloride was either already present in the concrete or came from the pool via water vapor. Chloride can overcome the passivity of the natural oxide film on the surface of steel. As we talked about earlier, the steel, once it doesn't have that passive film, is ready to corrode and lose strength. Now this example is pretty extreme, but chloride, where is that used in our road salts? So that's a concern for me, but there is actually some good news here. As I said earlier, of course, traditional vehicles with paint, they can still rust out. They probably have more problems with salt than stainless steel does. I was just kind of thinking, oh, stainless steel, I don't have to do anything. My car is good forever, but we will have to do a little bit to keep up our cyber trucks. If you properly maintain your stainless steel, it will go a very long way to eliminate any concern. If you wash the underbody a few times a year, maybe as soon as they stop salting the roads, or maybe once or twice during the winter, the stainless steel should be able to last pretty much forever. Now the bummer is all of that goes away if you wrap it or coat it. It could still last an incredibly long time, but if that wrap or coating happens to make something vulnerable, some part of the stainless steel vulnerable, then you're open to corrosion again and it could eat through a lot of your Cybertruck. All right, so let's get into the part I'm really disappointed about how to clean our Cybertrucks, how to clean the stainless steel on them. And it's really no different. If you know how to clean stainless steel, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. And I did look up some videos of the DeLorean. So I would suggest you also just look up washing my DeLorean. There's tons of videos from people who have had DeLoreans and just made a quick little video about washing it, but it can be as simple as warm water and dish Soap. That's really all it takes. The big thing to know here is you want to go with the grain so the steel will have a grain to it and you want to follow that pattern in the grain as you are wiping it down and washing it. That goes for washing with soap, that goes for drying and all those things. You want to do all of that. You can use an abrasive sponge to go with the grain then rinse with water. Now doing that will not remove paint, stain, or rust that's on your stainless steel. If you have any of that you can use mineral spirits and then a paper towel or a scotch pad if more power is needed. To remove rust there's an item I found called Citrus Surf 2310 
in, it's a cleaner, rust remover, and passivator. Go with the grain to make any abrasive pads you use less noticeable, and if you go very abrasive, finish it with a less abrasive pad after that to make the cleaning marks disappear or at least less noticeable. After rust removal, you can passivate with the Citrus Surf 2310. There is a gel formula that can be used. You want to let this sit for 20 minutes, and it needs to stay wet, which is why the gel formula can help. If it's starting to dry out, you can just mist it with water or apply more of the Citrus Surf to keep it wet. And then after the 20 minutes, you just want to blast it with water and get all of the Citrus Surf off. Passivation can last for years, so you can do this maybe once a year and really keep a nice protective coat. Another product I came across is called Rust Rescue 200. This should not interfere with the look of the stainless steel, but we don't know for sure. So just like most products, you want to do a test spot somewhere you can't see or won't be very noticeable just to be sure it won't interfere with the look. And this will give a coating in addition to the passivation. You apply liberally all over the entire surface, wait 10 minutes, then wipe it off with a clean cloth. That's it. If you do this process, you really can just clean the truck once or twice a year and then reapply the rust rescue after two to three years. That is it. If you don't do rust rescue, you should probably do passivation once a year. There is another product I came across called Evaporate. Rust Super Safe Rust Remover. This is environmentally friendly, which is great, and it's safe to use, so you don't have to worry about it hurting you, but it does not come in large quantities, and the uses that I saw, people were mostly setting small items in a tub of this to let kind of the rust be eaten away, so I'm not sure if this will be super useful for us. You've probably heard WD-40 with steel wool can remove rust really well. You use triple aught steel wool with a little bit of pressure will take off the surface rust. Another one that's commonly used for stainless steel is Magic Erasers with Barkeeper's Friend. And this is just for cleaning off the car after a wash. And you can also use Worth Industrial Stainless Steel Care Spray. And then a great tip I saw from one of the DeLorean videos I watched is to get a water blade. Since the Cybertruck is so flat and angular, you can just use that blade and wipe all the water right off. Then you don't have to worry about scratches or using a cloth or anything to dry it off. Now me personally, I'm going to do as little as possible <laughs> for my Cybertruck, just like I do with my current Teslas. But I do want to keep it healthy and happy. I'm kind of hoping and planning that this is like the last vehicle I ever buy. I'm, it won't be exactly, but I'm hoping that I buy the Cybertruck and I like never want to trade it in. I want to keep it forever and ever. Now, if a better Cybertruck comes out, you know, maybe, but uh, I want to do some of these things. I want to passivate it. I want to keep the stainless steel healthy and happy. Uh, just based off of what I read, I definitely won't be wrapping mine, I don't think. Uh, but I don't know. I'm just pretty interested in the subject. I'm curious to hear what you think down in the comments. I look forward to talking to you down there and learning a lot more. Hope you enjoyed this one and you will see me in the next video.